In one of my previous videos, the multifunction table saw jig, I show you the many uses and functions of this jig, but I guess I didn't show you how I built it. And many of you email me and also make comments asking if I can make a video on how I built it. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. So the jig that I'll be making is for a Beesmeyer type of fence. If you don't have uh, this type of fence, it doesn't matter. You can always customize it to fit whatever type of fence that you have. Now you can say that, well, I have a really strange looking fence on my table saw. Well, take a look at my Felder uh, table saw and see the type of fence that I have to deal with. So as you can see, with a little bit of creativity, you can customize your jig to fit over any type of fence that you have. Now when it comes to making jigs, I like to use Baltic Birch because it's a little bit stronger due to the multiply that it has and also it's because it's void free, which means that when you cut through it, there should be no gaps or holes like you probably see in, in some of the lower grade plywoods. So here's the material that I have roughed out. The fence that we'll be building today will be 7 inches tall. Now you can make it taller or shorter is really up to you. The reason why I chose 7 inches is because when the blade is raised to its maximum height, it's a little over 3 inches tall. So I want enough room on top there so that I can hold my material comfortably away from the blade while making my cut. Another reason why I chose 7 inches is because my push stick is 6 inches tall. So when I'm cutting thin strips like this, and I'm using thin stock. As you can see, the push stick is at a very comfortable level where I can hold the push sticks tight against my fence while making my cut. I also cut a lot of eight quarter. And again, the height of my push stick works really well. So to get the proper measurements for your fence, I know that I'll be making it seven inches tall. So I already ripped these to seven inches wide. Now the length is gonna be determined by the diagonal measurements of your fence. So that means I'm going to have to measure from corner to corner. From here to here. And I'm going to add another eighth of an inch to it because I don't want to be too tight. Now remember, this will be your inside dimension of your fence. So don't forget to add the thickness of your two outside caps, which I have here. So it looks like it measures 41 and 15 sixteenth. I'm just going to add a sixteenth to it. I'll call this 42 inches plus the thickness of my two end pieces. So my finished dimension is going to be 43 and 3 eighths. So now that our side pieces are cut, it's time to cut the middle piece. Now this is where you're going to have to pay a little bit more attention because this is the most important part. You want your jig to be able to fit over your fence nice and easy without being too tight and definitely not too loose. If it's too tight, if you have to force it down, you're actually splaying your fence out this way and then it won't be square. That's not good. And uh, you definitely don't want it to be loose for obvious reasons. You want your fence to be able to just drop it in like this, okay, without any kind of play. Now remember I told you that I made my fence an eighth of an inch longer. So when you drop it in, all you have to do is push it forward like this. Now don't worry about the slop, because once you push it forward, remember when you're cutting, you always want to push forward. You never want to bring it back. That's climb cutting, and that's something you never want to do on a table saw. To cut the width of my metal pieces, I want to take a few measurements along my fence to make sure that it's somewhat consistent. I also want to take measurements on the back side just to make sure that my fence is not too out of whack. And I was pretty lucky. The variance is only about two thousandths of an inch difference between all my measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the largest measurement and I'm going to add about five to six thousandths of an inch to it just to make it a little bit bigger. By experience, that seems to give me the best fit. And if I try to make it perfect, it always turned out just a bit too tight for me. So the largest measurement that I had on my fence was 4.028. I want to add five to six thousandths of an inch bigger to it, so my target is going to be 4.033 or 3.4, somewhere around there. I already set my fence to just a little bit bigger than that. 
I'm going to make my cut, see how much I'm off, and then I'm going to tap it in. So my reading is 4.055. So I'm about 21 to 22 thousandths of an inch too big. So I'm going to set my caliper in place. And whatever the reading is, I'm just going to tap the fence over until it moves 21 to 22 thousandths of an inch. So here we go. And this is what I got. Close enough. So once you're happy with the size, you want to make sure that you cut the other two pieces at the same time without moving their setting. To cut the length of the middle piece, I always cut it a 30 seconds or a 16th of an inch shorter because it doesn't have to be perfect and it makes gluing up much easier. Now you might see a little gap on one end, it really doesn't matter. Now that all my pieces are cut to size, I gave it a quick sand and I'm about ready to put it together. Now before I start gluing it up, I just want to point out that my middle piece is really not sitting on my fence. I put a spacer in here to kind of lift the middle piece up a little bit. Because when I drop my jig down, I want to make sure that my fence is actually sitting flush on my table. This way I don't have to worry about my middle piece hitting the fence and lifting it up. Now I'll be using glue and nail to put this thing all together. And yes, I will be shooting nail into my jig. And don't you dare judge me. First, I need to find out where I'm going to shoot the nail. So I'm going to use a square, find the center of my board, put a tick mark on it, set my square to that tick mark, and then draw my line. Now that I got the nail line marked out, I'm going to glue the two end pieces on first. I'm going to let the glue sit for a little bit, let it tack up, and then I'll shoot the nails in. So this is the bottom of my jig where I'll be putting my rabbit. So I'm going to put my nail at least an inch away. So now it's time to glue everything up all together. So the way I glue up, the first thing I do is I would put glue on the two ends, making sure that your spacers is in place. Bring this up. Now for the middle piece, I'm going to put glue on only on three sides. Remember, it's a little bit shorter, so there'll be a gap on one end, so you don't need any glue there. I'm just going to drop it in, put my side piece up. So the next thing I would do is cramp my ends, making sure that it is flushed on the end here and then also top and bottom. Then I'm also going to clamp the other side. What you're going to need then is the clamp that has a deep enough throat we can actually reach the uh, nail line. Because if it's not deep enough and you have a shallow clamp like this, when you clamp it up, it's actually pushing your jig inward like this and then it won't be square. So basically your jig will be absolutely useless. So I'm gonna use this clamp. I'm gonna start at one end, making sure that um, it's absolutely square. Then I'll shoot the nail in. And I'm gonna move it down every four inches until I get to the end. Okay, so here we go.
So the jig's been sitting overnight. The glue should be dry by now. So what I'm going to do is take the clamps off, shoot the nails on both ends on the opposite side here, and uh, plug up the holes with a little putty and give it a quick sand, and I'm ready to cut the rabbit. Oh, nice fit. So to cut the rabbit, I'll be using my flat top blade. The height is set at 7 eighths of an inch. Now that works for me. You can cut it to whatever height you want. The thickest material that I would ever flush trim would be 3 quarters of an inch. And I give myself an eighth of an inch just for clearance. Now I'm going to be making this in two passes so the depth of my rabbit will be a quarter of an inch. Now normally I don't put finishes on my jigs, but this one in particular I know that I'll be pushing material against my fence. So I want to make sure it's nice and slick. So I'm just going to put a couple of coats of my uh, oil finish that I've already pre-mixed. Now you can use lacquer um, or anything you want, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you put a nice coat of wax at the very end. Now when dealing with um, finishes or handling any kind of chemicals, I always like to wear the gloves to protect myself because I don't want to jeopardize my other career as a super hand model. Now, you know your skin and your pores is kind of a gateway to your body, so take the necessary precaution, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.